Well, good morning. Welcome to an episode of Papa's Workshops. These are for Adam, Brady, Luke, and Brenna, and for all those others that enjoy seeing an old man make sawdust. Before we get started, we need to check in with my assistant, who is diligently holding the bench down. There she is. That's my good Molly. <laughs> this is not a treat. That's not a treat. You doing a good job holding that bench down? I was afraid it was going to fall over. All right, let's get to work. All right, uh, so this is part nine of the Newport style card table. We're going to finish. We've got the construction actually done in the previous episodes. Um, so we just got some details to wrap up and then uh, we'll start the finishing process. Uh, the first detail is the underside of the, the fixed top. On a field trip today, we're at the uh, Kansas City Woodworkers Guild and I'm engraving the uh, underside of the tank top. So you got a date right there. So here's the results of the, I went, to the guild and, and burned that. I filled it with, I, I sealed it with shellac and then I, I painted it with black paint so that it would stand out once I darkened this. Uh, but it bled a little bit and I don't want to risk sanding it completely off. So this is going to be on the underside of the fixed uh, table and I've pre-drilled the, the holes for the screws. Um, I don't know how the original how they attach the top. I'm using screws. Okay, here are the screws that I'm going to use to attach the top. They're number 10s, an inch and a half, but you can see how shiny they are. And uh, I did get slotted screws. I know screws in the 18th century would have been handmade and there wouldn't have been many. In fact, the original may have even been nailed on. I, I don't really know. But we're going to make these at least look older. Um, we're going to get rid of the shininess, and like I said, I use slotted instead of Phillips. Uh, so what we need to do is just put this, this is just water in here, and we're going to put a little bit of citric acid. It's just, you get this at the canning, any place that sells canning supplies, grocery stores, Walmart, those kinds of places. Um, so you just put a little bit in there. It doesn't take a lot. And uh, mix that up a little bit. And then just put these in there. This will dissolve the, uh, the zinc coating that's on these screws and make them look just bare metal. And uh, then time will make them look older. You know, let that sit for like maybe an hour, a little bit less. And uh, you can actually, if you wait, you can start seeing it bubble a little bit. It doesn't give off any odor or anything. It's completely safe to put down a drain. So, so we'll let that set and then we'll take a look at it. So here are the screws after they've been uh, rinsed and dried off. And there's what the original was. You can see it makes quite a bit of difference in their appearance. And you can do other things to make them look older. Um, I've heard of, of putting them in vinegar a little bit to darken them. Um, also uh, heating them up and putting them in coffee grounds, kind of turn them brown, but I'm just gonna leave them like this and they'll just age naturally from air. All right, we're gonna start some of the prep for the finish. Um, I'm going to use a uh, aniline dye to darken this. I want it to match uh, uh, the coffee table that's in the family room where this is going to go. So, um, and that's a water-based dye. So what we're going to do is I've sanded everything by hand on all the pieces uh, so to get them, all the machine marks are out and. Um, so now we're going to uh, wipe it down with just a damp cloth, get everything wet, and that'll raise the grain. Then we'll go back and get the little fuzzies off. And also if there were any dents that I sanded over that may, may pop up, 
we, we can we'll fix those um, so it's kind of a do what happened there um, all right so we we'll just get a little rag here and it's just a bucket of warm water and we're just gonna wipe this down I know that seems like all this time to keep the wood dry and now we're getting it wet you don't have to get it super super wet so we'll just go around and do that all right one more little detail thing we got to do is i want to put a chamfer on these edges and just a very slight one on this so that as the leg swings out it doesn't scratch the the top um, so one thing that makes uh, doing end grain easier is to put a little bit of uh, either alcohol or mineral spirits I'm using alcohol that will make it a little easier to uh, I just want to put a slight slight one on this because that'll be visible Of course, the uh, this one will have to do with just a, a chisel. So I'm going to do that on the other one. All right. After the uh, water has evaporated from everything, we've, we've damped it. So now we've got little fuzzies on this. So we're just going to take some brown paper and just rub it down. And that will make it nice and smooth. Now this, this won't... Uh, this won't guarantee you won't have any more raised grain after the dye, but it will help quite a bit. And we'll do the same thing after we, after the dye is on and dried, we'll do the same uh, brown paper trick and just rub that down. And if you've got to uh, sand anything, like on the end grain, use 400 grit or greater just, just lightly. Otherwise, you just have more if you sand it, you're going to get more raised grain. Uh, you can do the wet process again if you've got to do some major uh, adjustments. Uh, so we'll do that to everything, and then we'll uh, tape off the areas that we don't want the dye on and put some dye on there. All right, ready to put on some dye uh, using trans tint. Um, this is a brown mahogany, which is equivalent to burnt umber, and dark mission, uh, probably dark mission brown, uh, and that's equivalent to raw umber in artist colors. So you mix this 32 to 1 with water, and this 32 with 1 with water, then together. Um, and I'm just going to put this on with a rag, and uh, I've got the brushes for the nooks and crannies of the carvings.
take a, when I'm done, I'll take a wet paper towel and just kind of go over it. That kind of will even out anything that's on the surface. You can also kind of lighten it if you get something that looks a little dark. So that's the process. Well, I thought I had remembered the color that I used on the uh, coffee table that's I'm trying to match. Um, and this is the strip. And these, these are my color uh, boards. So this is the different steps for this particular finish. Um, so this is just the dye and then the dye with some shellac and then there's a glaze and then more more finish so they got these other two and <clears throat> the finish that's on the coffee table is closer to this this right in here so it's much redder than that so i went and added another layer of red dye and so that's what it looks pretty it looks pretty bad right there i mean as far as it's being really too red but after we put on the the dark shellac, it'll it'll go from from this to this, and then we keep going. It'll it'll just get darker. So so we're ready to uh, uh, spray things. So I think I'm going to go ahead and assemble the hinge. And then I'll be able to spray this while it's standing up. Um, and then we'll do the two tops separately. So I have to glue the fixed piece of the hinge on to the table. I'm going to do that and then and put these in. Uh, and then we'll be ready. Okay, we got everything assembled except for the top, the hinges. That's everything is glued in place. I... Uh, Drove those almost all the way through, so about three eighths or half an inch from the uh, from the end. Then put a little bit of glue in on the, in both ends and pounded it the rest of the way in. So it's only glued to this piece, top and bottom. So we are ready, and I have rubbed everything down with brown paper, get all the fuzzies off it, so it is ready to spray. I just need the weather to cooperate. Uh, it's a little uh, windy and cold, so I have to spray out the garage outside, basically. So, uh, here in a few days, we'll start putting on some shellac. All right, this is what it looks like. I got about uh, three or four coats of shellac on there, and I just sanded it down with 400 grit and a uh, gray scratch, scratch bright pad. And so now I just need to uh, get all the dust off it. So that's kind of the way it looks. Today's a rainy day, so I just brought it all down in here in the shop. And I'll take it back out to my makeshift spray booth in the garage. Now cherry is a closed uh, grain wood so it's pretty easy to get the uh, the grain filled with just a few coats the tops the two tops I'll probably put some extra get it uh, good and smooth and uh, so we don't see any of the grain structure on the on the uh, reflections so we're getting there all right I think we got enough finish on um, but you see it's really shiny and and I don't like that look. So we have to rub out the finish. And, and you can see where the light hits, there's there's a little bit of the grain still and the grain's not quite filled, so it's it's a little uh bumpy, I guess. Um now you could French polish this and get it absolutely glass-like, but it's still too shiny <laughs> when you do that. Um, so what I do is I take uh, 400 grit or 600 grit, something like that, and uh, just lightly sand it and, and get it down to, 
got these little, I use this green pad to wipe off the corning, the little specks of uh, shellac. Now, the more time the shellac has had to dry, the less you'll get of that, but um, this hasn't, this has only sat overnight, so. Anyway, so I'm gonna sand this down to where it's almost got all of the grain out of there. I could, I could spray it again and, uh, you know, try to get it absolutely flat, but it really isn't necessary. So we'll do that, get the whole surface, and then I'll rub it out finally with a gray scratch bright. That's a medium, and you can get all the shininess. That's what I'm after is get all the shininess out of there. Um, so what it'll look like, I got this other side already done. And so this part I've done with the gray, and then I go over the final part with the white. And you can get whatever sheen you want. The white's the finer. And you see, it just kind of cleans right up with that. It gets us a nice, nice smooth finish that isn't shiny. So now what I'll do when we get everything to this to this point where it's not shiny, um, then we'll put on a coat of wax, paste wax. And I use a dark brown paste wax. It won't add much color to the to the to the uh, tops, but on the carvings it'll highlight. It'll get stuck in the corners, and it and it gives it an aged look, and and makes it look, you know, makes the carvings pop a little bit more. So we're gonna get everything to this this level, then we'll be ready to put on the paste wax. Well, here you see we got some. I, I went over that with six hundred paper just to highlight the the runs from the spraying. So what I do is just take a small scraper and just very lightly, you can hit the tops of those. You don't want to take off too much. Let's see that, that pretty much disappeared right there. The camera's kind of in the way. <laughs> You can get rid of those pretty easily. And then uh, just go over that with 6600 again. So that's all pretty good right there. And then I'll go over it with the gray to get it uniform. So it's not, uh, it's not a big deal. All right. Here is the bone claw with the uh, dark brown wax on it. And you can see it's pretty shiny. Um, I kind of buffed it up a little too much, but that's that'll be all right. It's not as uh, plastic looking as the other. It's got more of a sheen. The lights are shining on it, so it looks worse. Look down and see how that highlights the, uh, the carvings. I need to rub that out a little bit in there still. I've only got, I've only done about that far. And uh, this is what it looks like right there before, before putting the uh, wax on it. And see how the wax gets down in there and kind of highlights the edges um, and the shadows and everything. So you see this is the, carving without that so so we get all this wax on and then we can start putting it together all right we're put the screws in we're assembling the uh, the unit so we'll flip this over put the uh, hinges on i still have to polish out the other top but we're getting there i had a little mess up i had to i screwed up the finish on this side so i had to sand <laughs> Sand all the shellac off, and uh, I, I tried French polishing it out, but it just, the, the defect went all the way down through the die, so I had to sand it off, correct that, and uh, so we just put the die back on in, in another few coats of uh, shellac. Well, here is the finished table. 
And we got the uh, the carvings and the bone claw with the open talons. You can just barely see those. And the double top, the apron. I don't know if you can see. Let's open this up. So here's a view of the side with the hinge installed. And so we open this up this way. And then the other side, there's our, our hinge. And then we just, I put a little felt on the top so it wouldn't scratch. And then we just flip that over. So, and I got these two felt pads on there so that they don't scratch each other. Let, I'm gonna leave this open for a, a couple weeks, maybe let that finish cure good and well before we start slapping it down. It was a fun project. Well, uh, that's about it. We will, uh, uh, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do next. We got some home improvement projects coming up, so uh, it may be a little bit, but uh, there will be another project. Until then, thanks for watching.